right, it is done. It is done! Welcome to Anime Sundays Upgraded, ho. You're watching Anime Sundays. Good evening, everybody, and welcome back to Anime Sundays, the show where we talk about anime, yes, on Sundays, and I am your host, Jared Ross. As you can see, I have slightly upgraded my room a little bit. Uh, I have moved to the master bedroom upstairs since a roommate moved out, and as you can see, I've kind of upgraded the anime headquarters studio slash shooting area, whatever you want to call it. So what you're looking at now is, yes, pretty much all the posters that I have, and you know, probably just the cleanest anime art room of all time. So today, um, as some of you may know, some of you may not, Crunchyroll has announced the winners to the 2022 Anime Awards. <laughs> yes, if you didn't know, Crunchyroll for the past several years has had its own kind of anime awards, you know, kind of like the Oscars for anime. Of course, everything in these categories doesn't mean, you know, that these animes are the be-all, end-all of these type of topics or genres, but it's pretty cool that our community has an award show like this. So today, we will be going through every category of the winners, and we're going to be talking about if I necessarily agree or disagree with the person or scene chosen for that category. All right, starting off, anime of the year, Attack on Titan. I mean, no surprise there. I would say a lot of the animes that kind of came out in 2021, I wouldn't say were that crazy heat. At least the seasons that were coming out during that year weren't like the greatest seasons. Out of the nominees here, the only one that I think takes it over the first part of Attack on Titan is definitely Jujutsu Kaisen, um, the second half of season one. I think the second half of season one of JJK definitely started really getting into a lot more depth about the curse energy, the fights, the techniques, the potential of like what curse spirits could do. We get to finally see Gojo really put his foot in there. And then of course, we get to see how the students are fighting. Uh, Toto and Megami and Obara has her moments. But I feel like since they got anime of the year in 2021, 20, uh, that's probably a main reason why they didn't get it. I don't know, it's based on voting, but I can see why they gave it to Attack on Titan. Okay, moving on. Next up, we have Best Animation. The winner was Demon Slayer. If you see my boy Shoutout's Shur latest middle ground, he did a Demon Slayer versus um, JJK. And one of the actual topics was animation. I do agree, um, after some convincing, yes, Demon Slayer definitely has the better animation than JJK. You know, all in all, I just think the effort they put into like every panel of Demon Slayer is just so crisp and clean that you kind of have to give it to them. JJK, I think, has a little bit more fun with the animation sometimes. They try to make it a little bit more fluent when they're doing the fights, which I like a lot too, but I do think Demon Slayer took that. Now, for best opening and ending sequence, now I'm not gonna lie to you, when it comes to opening and ending sequences, I'm not the guy. I'm not the guy that has like a real big preference, but I will say, I think they fumbled the bag on this one. The Beast Stars opening for season two, absolutely ridiculous. I was like almost downloading that on my phone. Yeah, so I think they dropped the ball on that one. Ending sequence, I barely even listened to any sequences, but I think they definitely dropped the ball and B Star should have took that. All right, moving on. We have our best boy winner, Boji from Ranking of Kings. Uh, people were telling me about Ranking of Kings. I like the show. I don't think it should have won anime of the year, but I'm actually getting a little more interested in this show in this second half of the season that's being released now. I'm not really like a Boji fan. It's nice that Boji is so intelligent despite his disabilities being deaf and not being able to speak, but that isn't really enough for me. Like I understand like anime, you know, what more can they do to handicap a main character to make him seem, you know, lit and really beating the odds. His handicaps to me does not make me like him more. I'm sorry. The whole cute type of aspect they try to pull on people, it's not really hitting for me. I really like Kage as a character more. I do think though, it should have went to Senku. I'm not gonna lie to you. Senku, season two, doing more than enough for the Kingdom of Science. Bringing back cell phones, uh, planning out all types of advanced warfare tactics, going above and beyond, making homes with heat, weapons that work. I just think Senku as a whole is one of the greatest uh, new gen 
MCs. And I feel like he's done a lot more uh, in his season two for his squad, his Kingdom of Science, than Boji has done, you know, on his journey. All right, best girl, Nobara. Listen, I'm not even mad at that. I agree with that 100%. Nabara has done nothing but show out and show off all season two. And especially in that last fight with Itadori. Yeah, she's going hard. Best score, again, I'm not a big music head. The Demon Slayer Mugen Train score. It did have some fire songs, so I'm going to leave that as it is. Best director, I Taxi. Now, I haven't seen I Taxi. I heard good things about it. I'm definitely interested in watching it now. But in terms of the directing, I Taxi must be doing some real outrageous things for them to be taking the cake over Attack on Titan. The way they set up scenes, the way they flash back to scenes, the way they direct the voice actors in their scenes, of course the fighting. I think Attack on Titan's directing as a whole is like one of its greatest aspects. Next up, best character design, Kadashi Hiramatsu. He designed the characters for JJK. And uh, you know, I'm not mad at the JJK characters. Even from your boy who can't speak much without you know using his cursed energy to Panda, to Mekamaru, to just even Gojo in general. I think it's great character design there. Best protagonist, Odakawa from Odd Taxi. Again, haven't seen Odd Taxi. But honestly, out of best protagonist, and trust me, there's a lot of good protagonists here. Me personally, my favorite is Itadori. Do I say he's the best in terms of like what he's accomplished in season two over what some of these other protagonists have accomplished? I'm not sure. His ability to just adapt so fast in season two, like the stuff he's pulling out, the way he's really coming in clutch early. And mind you, he's still a young sorcerer, barely trained, only been in a handful of fights. And I just feel the way he was coming in season two just made him my favorite. Now, in terms of the best, yes, we all know Aaron Yeager is probably like one of the greatest protagonists out. His character development is through the roof. His overall agenda, what we don't even know about Aaron, his plot, just the way he moves, the way he's been finessing. Yes, amazing. A1 S tier stuff. But I think people are asleep on Joe. The Yellow Box season two, Nomad. I actually just finished it a couple weeks ago. And let me tell you, the Joe from this season two and season one, completely different. You know what I'm saying? Completely torn from uh, Pops dying and leaving the kids and like being addicted to painkillers, you know, fighting in underground matches, losing it. You know what I'm saying? Just really distraught and in despair. And he still climbs his way out of that, gets back into the boxing ring. Helps other famous boxers take W. Even when um, Chief died, I was like, yo, this is deep. Like, Miguel Boxing Season 2 is deep. And I believe the way Joe handled it all, even going back to the gym and trying to set things right. I think people slept on Joe in this Season 2. I think his character development and the stuff he was going through was way better than Season 1. Best antagonist. Now, here we go. Now, I actually had some good points in my DMs where people were saying, like, well, Aaron's not the antagonist. He's the protagonist. Like, the protagonist, the main character who the story's about, who's pushing the main agenda. How can Aaron be the antagonist? He's not opposing himself. I know protagonism and antagonism isn't supposed to focus necessarily on good and evil, but I just think here that at some point, we have to recognize as Aaron as the number one cause of chaos in the show. Yes, he is the protagonist. He is the main reason the show's gone. But then if you look at it at, on Marley's side, right? If you flip the script, is he still the protagonist? I'm not mad that they chose him as an antagonist. Do I agree that's the proper turn for him? No. And if I was going to choose somebody else, Sugar Rocky, for sure. Definitely Sugar Rocky. I already can tell by how he's coming early in season five, you know, even surpassing his own limits. I think Villain Academia carried season five. And I'm hoping in season six, it's the Sugar Rocky show. All right, best fight scene. Oh boy. A lot of y'all tore me up for this one. Toto and Itadori versus Hanami. Right now, amazing fight. Great technique, great explanation of abilities, great emotion, passion. Even Hanami enjoying the fight in the middle of it. Amazing. But I still think it should have went to Baruto. A lot of you may say, oh, Bariyama was shorter. The beginning of the fight, Naruto was getting his ass whooped. I think we need to stop underrating some of the aspects of fights that we enjoy just aside from the hand-to-hand -hand and from the animation. I think the epicness of a fight, the emotion of a fight, uh, what's at stake, I think those things matter. I think those things hold weight, even though nostalgia sometimes. I think those things hold weight in a fight. It's the same reason why we still hold DBZ fights to such a crazy high standard, even though we've seen a million of them and even though we kind of know the level that they're on. I think the Barato fight takes it because, number one, I think Again, when it just comes to Naruto fight, the choreography is usually unmatched. Yes, there was great choreography in JJK because there's two people going at it, but I just think the choreography of the martial arts in Naruto already puts it in like a new breath. You know, you're thinking Naruto's dead. You think it's Sasuke's on his last leg. Like stuff is really hitting the fan again in this fight. 
And then the fact that Karama dies, to me, is the saddest death. And then of course, Naruto's going ham. Some people didn't like the old nostalgic moves that he did on Sasuke. I was like, that's fire. You can say the Yuji and Itadori fight, yeah, maybe more enjoyable to watch, but I think the Naruto and Ishiki fight had me more on the edge of my seat. And realistically, I thought that the Naruto and Sasuke first, Ishiki the first time should have been here, but I don't know if it came out in 2021 or not. So yes, I'm giving Baruch for that nomination then. Okay, best romance. I don't really watch romance anime. The whole Beastars romance, I mean, it's not hidden for me, I'm sorry. Like, I understand, like, it doesn't necessarily make you a furry if you mess with it, but uh, best drama. To Your Eternity. Now, I haven't seen To Your Eternity. I heard it was also very good. And based on some of these other dramas that I see here, I would probably pick that as well. Best action. Of course, JJK wins again. Um, And I think all around, that's a good pick. In terms of best action, who's giving you the most action most of the time? Yeah, it's definitely JJK. Best fantasy. You already know. Reincarnated Slime Season 2. I see a lot of people hating on this because... They thought Jabba's reincarnation should have been here. They should have took this one. I have a couple problems with Jabba's reincarnation. Number one, the MC being overly perverted to the point where it's like he's borderlining pedophilia often is not entertaining to me at all. As a matter of fact, it kind of blows me and makes me want to stop watching the show. Story-wise, it wasn't really hitting for me. Setting-wise, sure, they have some interesting characters, but even then, I don't think they're more interesting than some of the races in Slime. And I'm just a lot more interested in the hierarchy of, of power in Slime. The, you know, kind of hidden secret message or hidden secret agenda of what's really going on in this isekai. Like, why is the slime here? Like, what's really going on? I'm more interested in how that evolves and plays than Java's reincarnation. Not to mention that, you know, Rainbow just gets more OP and more OP than the last to the point where it's like, you know, people are often debating him with Goku and characters of the caliber. For me, slime takes it. Best comedy out of these, I mean, hey, congratulations to them. The only one I've watched is Miss Kobayashi's, and it is funny. Best film, I mean, what can you say? It, it, it's obviously Mugen Train. If my hero was in the same category, I probably would still give it to Mugen Train. All right, Japanese voice actor, uh, your boy Yuki Kaiji. Aaron Yeager, I mean, he's doing a great job. He's, he's doing a great job. Um, I can't even complain about him at all. Best English voice actor, Skate the Infinity. I don't watch Skate the Infinity, but I also heard it was really interesting, really good. Um, I also heard Itadori's actor did pretty good, but hey, congratulations to them. So yeah, y'all, those are my thoughts about the different nominees and categories. For the most part, I can see how some of these animes took the W, but there are some things I agree and disagree on. So yeah, let me know in the comment section who you voted for, if you agree, if you disagree, or something didn't even make the nominations that should have made the nomination. Tag Crunchyroll, let them know, and yeah, hope to see you next Sunday.